what do you think would happen if a city like Seattle, with more than four million people in its metropolitan area, uh, had its drinking water, drinkable water, potable water, reduced to less than 10% available, all reservoirs running dry, wells, and the city and all municipalities were turning off access to public water. What do you think would happen? What do you think would happen if all four million people were told you can no longer water your lawn, wash your car, fill your swimming pool, all the things that were recreational. Oh, by the way, if you have a golf, court, a golf course, and even if you have recyclable water, you can no longer use it because it must be directed to emergency drinking water for some part of the population. What do you think would happen? What do you think would happen if the rich folks said, screw you, I'll just go buy water from someplace else. And then all the bottled water went away. And the people that couldn't go buy water, what do you think would happen? What do you think would happen when those rich people said, well, I'll just go get 500 gallon tanker trucks and go to some other state or go somewhere else and collect water and bring it back for me because I have the money. What do you think would happen? What do you think would happen if, if every household was restricted to five gallons per person per day? And you can only get that water by walking somewhere. And to satisfy four million people, there were only 200 places you could go to even get the water that was going to be allocated to you. How would you get there? How would the elderly get there? What about the sick? Do you know how much a five gallon jug of water weighs? Six times five, six pounds times five. That's 30 pounds. How many people can hump 30 pounds just for themselves? Anywhere farther than 10, 15 yards to the river at the campsite or the pump at the campsite. How many of them could make it a mile carrying that? And as a note, the five gallons per person per day is the FEMA recommended amount of water in emergency situations, and it can go down to as low as two. So think about how you would take care of your personal hygiene, how you would take care of any cooking. How would you just take care of drinking? What would you do? Well, this is no longer a hypothetical scenario. As we speak in Cape Town, South Africa, Cape Town is the second largest city in South Africa and the largest tourist attraction in the southern part of Africa, um, and has 4.4 million people, which is about the same as Seattle, and it is running out of water, and zero day, that means when all water will be cut off to all homes will be April 21st of 2018. That's two months from now. So the world is about to see what happens when a major metropolitan area is split between rich and poor, surrounded only by salt water, has its drinking water cut off. We're going to find out. Already uh, there are altercations at certain collection points where people have found springs and places they can go and, re and get water. Um, the governments uh, have already said they're going to deploy the military as guards at these places. Now remember there's only 200. So you have 200 places to satisfy the needs of 4 million. Frankly, 
I don't think that's mathematically possible to deliver that much water to that many people every day. I just don't think the math works. But we're going to see. I don't think they have enough troops to stop water riots. All you have to do is go and look at um, um, refugee camps around the world and see what happens when resources drop down to survival level, whether it's food or water, and what happens when people go and charge those trucks to get what they need or to get what they want. Let's go back to those rich folks. They're going to send trucks, tanker trucks, <clears throat> for their own selves to someplace else to drive the water back to them. They'll probably try to sell it at a premium, which is called scalping, which is in most civilized places is illegal. Um, but what do you think they're going to have to do to protect that water? Now, if they're already having skirmishes and the water hasn't run out and people are getting already upset, what do you think is going to happen when people will do what they have to do to get water for themselves and their family. What do you think the violence level will be like? No one has any idea how long it takes to actually build a desalination plant to service four and a half million people, right? Or the cost. If they were going to do that, the people and their government would have already built them as contingency or just put them online to service the people. But no one wants to pay for that, right? Because it's an additional tax. In this country, uh, Southern California, actually 80% of California, came dangerously close. Um, their reservoirs got down to 40%. Uh, there was talk of rationing and all of Southern California, and they did ration, and then rationing at the state level. But what do you think would happen in a state like California, or most specifically Southern California, uh, if all of them could not get water? And they are a desert, just like Cape Town. What do you think would happen down there? It would be, a, it would be catastrophic. It would be catastrophic. The danger level would be intense. People would be trying to flee and like they did for Katrina, leave that area and either go north to Northern California or into other states like in the Northwest where there is plenty of water. Now where I live, we're building a wall. <laughs> That's a joke, but you would have, you, you would probably have checkpoints and, and martial law and militia go out to keep people from coming into the state to, uh, to take the water that we have here. And that will probably happen in other places. So I ask you to think about <clears throat> what would you do if you were told you can only have five gallons of water per person per day in your household and that was it. What would you do? And you had to do that, by the way, and you have to do that for like a year. <laughs> do you think there's going to be an airlift of water to Cape Town, South Africa? Do you think governments around the world are going to send their navy with, you know, <clears throat> containers of water? <clears throat> do you think they're going to be floating desalination plants? to help this, the four million people of Cape Town? I doubt it. But we'll see. But this is food for thought. So as always, thanks for watching. Carry on.